Hey, so in this video, we're going to talk about dealing with the server when using React. This is something that a lot of people are kind of shaky on, and there's some good reasons that it's not very clear, because it doesn't really fit with how you do things in React well. So our components want data, and our server wants data, and our components don't really care how we save or fetch data. It could be sending it to the server via some sort of API that we've devised, or it could be REST, or it could be anything like that, or it could just be storing it in local storage. It doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter to the components. So we have to find a way to abstract that. And also server interactions are generally unclean using HTTP and stuff like that just to transport data, which isn't something you want to worry about in a really nice library like React. So the direct approach, uh, or somewhat direct approach, the direct approach is really using something like SuperAgent inside your components, which isn't very good. So what we can do instead is something like in Angular, where you have services, this is just, we have an API file, and that somehow provides users and a login function, and then we get a promise returned. We handle success, and we handle failure. Now this is okay for simple things. It doesn't scale particularly well, and we have to keep in mind that uh, some of our components might be using this API, and it's not very uniform. If we wanted to change logon to sign in or something, you know, it's it's going to break things. Uh, but there's other things we can do instead. So one is mixins, which is a way that you can provide functions for components, and then they can call them using this dot whatever. So if we implement our server as a REST API, it'd be really easy to implement make REST mixin. Or we could just call it make server mixin or whatever. And whether we're using, uh, whether we're using, uh, the word's escaping, REST or not, uh, it doesn't matter because the API just has to be the same. Do create session, very simple. We know that when we call this, it will try to create a session, and then we handle success and failure. And then we can get the user and say, uh, and pass the session, which we have stored in state in here. So with this, we would just have a simple mappings inside this mixin, where we just say, we'll call a post request create, and we'll call a put request update, and a get request just get, and same with delete. So that's one way that you can abstract these server things out and just deal with really nice functions that just take parameters and uh, give a response via a promise. Another thing that people have been working on lately is this flux pattern. So in flux, we have actions. So an action might be something like try login with some data. So we try to login, and then instead of having it return a promise, it doesn't return anything, but we can listen to a change for a user. So when the user changes, when it's been updated, probably because try login succeeded, or it was changed anywhere else in our app, we get this new user object that we can then store in our state so we can render it. Also, maybe we get user errors because the password was incorrect, and we can set that state in our error and then display the information, you know, your password was wrong, or you forgot to enter a username and we somehow submitted it anyway, or something like that. So Flux is the, the last way that you can do this. And there are other things, but they basically fit into one of these, these levels of organization and decentralization, where this is very centralized. We just have an API and a function and data, and that's it. This is slightly less uh, centralized because we don't have to implement users.login specifically. We just know that we have these endpoints or these types of data, and our server knows how to handle them. And then this is very decentralized because we're not even waiting for a response. We could never get a response to try login, and there just wouldn't be a response, and that's it. So these are uh, some main ways to organize your application when you're trying to deal with a server and a client-side application. Also, some of these vary in, in how well they work with server-side rendering, which is a big concern. I haven't tried flux and server-side rendering. It wouldn't be particularly nice if you have any sort of state, such as maintaining the user in your uh, in your flux stores. Uh, 
uh, that'll be changing in 0 0.11, where we'll hopefully get be getting better context support, which allows pretty much anything to work with server-side rendering and makes it a lot less painful. Until then, be wary if you do have to do server-side rendering. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.